This is an instructional video on how to install an RJ45 connector onto Cat5 cable. Now the first thing that you need to remember to do is slide the boot onto the cable. Next, by turning in the direction of the small arrow, use the AmpNet Connect tool to cut about 1.5 inches of jacket. Leaving the extra length makes it easier to work with the wires. Now you can remove the jacket. Next you need to remove the screen. To do this, use a pair of shears and nip the metalized mylar near the jacket and tear the mylar off. Now fold the drain wire back and parallel to the jacket. Next remove the clear plastic. Again use a pair of shears and nip the plastic close to the jacket and tear the plastic off. Now, in this demonstration, I am using the wiring standard T568B to make a straight through patch cable. This wiring standard designates the color code. Each wire is placed into a load bar one at a time. Note the open end of the load bar faces you and the white wire with an orange stripe is placed in the leftmost position of the load bar. Next, the solid orange goes right beside. Now untwist the green pair and take the white wire with the green stripe and place it in the next position. Now untwist the blue pair and take the solid blue and place it in the next position. Next, the white wire with the blue stripe is in the next position. And finally that solid green wire that we had left behind is in the next position. Finally, Untwist the brown pair and take the white with brown stripe wire and place that in the next position. And finally the solid brown colored wire is in the final position. Now, grab the tips of all the wires and pull the load bar towards the jacket. If the drain wire is not already behind the load bar, position it so that it is behind the load bar and parallel to the jacket. Now, pull the load bar all the way down to make sure that the jacket fits inside the notch of the load bar. As you can see it does and the drain wire is centered at the back. Next, pull the load bar back and up to near the tips of the wires. Use it as a guide to cut the ends of the wires that are out of place and not straight. Now, using your fingers as a guide, 
place the remaining length of wire through a second load bar and pull it down so that it sits on top of the first load bar. Pull both load bars all the way down so that the jacket fits inside the notch of the first load bar. The second load bar is only temporary and is only used as a guide and a measuring device for your next cut. Make sure that everything is in perfect position before you make your cut and note that at the base of the first load bar there should be no more than two wires that overlap. At this point, a trick you can use is to use a heat gun and heat the wires for about 30 seconds. I set my digital heat gun to 120 degrees Celsius, which is 248 degrees Fahrenheit. This helps the wires to stay straight once you pull off the second load bar. Next, with the connector oriented tab down, insert the cable so that the white wire with the orange stripe is in the leftmost position. Once the cable is fully inserted, ensure that you can see the copper tips of all eight wires. The last thing to do before you make your crimp is ensure that the drain wire is centered at the back. Now it's time to make your crimp. Once you are finished your crimp, ensure that all the teeth have crimped down. Also, double check that you can see the copper tips of all eight wires. Next, fold the drain wire around to the front of the connector. Slide it up in between the two metal tabs and fold it behind one of the tabs. Now, the drain wire makes an electrical connection at both the back and the front of the connector. Next, slide the boot back up the cable and onto the connector. Now, the cable is complete, but before putting it into service, it should be tested. In this instance, a fluke net tool is being used. It shows continuity between all eight wires and the drain wire. 